Hello, I'm Greg, I'm Thomas, and we have empty glasses, yeah. and a noisy table, and we want to fill them with something special, special today, Yeah, something we haven't done for a while. And, um, for a while, I've actually never done this, sat down and gone through every single one in a row. No, no, me neither. And, and I might even argue that it's not a terribly smart decision, but we're going to do it anyways. <laughs> So what is that? Well, we have um, this and every one of our uh, Stone Berlin groundbreaking collaborations uh, that we're going to be trying in a rapid series here. Um, there are another three, six, seven, so this makes eight. Oh, so eight total. Another seven on the table there. And um, well, let's just start. This is the uh, one we did with Maui Brewing Company. Garrett, our friend from Maui, came over. And, uh, oh yeah, Carrie, that would be great. Come on, Greg. She's gonna bring a little noise reducer coaster. Makes a lot of sense. Yes. Although it's still kind of a little boomy. Um, this one we called uh, Aloha Berlin. You, you remember uh, the special ingredients we put in this one, Thomas? Oh, that was uh, this coconut and, and a lot of coffee. So it was more coconut powder, and then we thought, okay, what local, what can we do additionally? And we were thinking of um, hazelnuts, and so we have like a very nutty, nut, nut <laughs> <laughs> ale, yeah, with coffee, and it's there, there you go. go. Oh, it has also, yeah, nice liveliness to it. And we have it's uh, like a year ago when we brewed this beer in package, so that was the very first one we did. And I remember this also from the, uh, we did a, a, a special uh, beer dinner and uh, with, with Garrett when he was out. And we then rode back into the center of Berlin on our bicycles, a nice uh, August evening. Uh, it was just beautiful at night, yeah, warm, warm, shorts and t-shirts were fine. And, and we might have had a couple of beers and yeah, it was a very entertaining bike ride back. We actually made it, I made a video of it. Uh, cheers. Post. So, this, this whole idea of these um, collaborations were to, uh, were, were, were born um, alongside with the very beginning of breathing life into Stone Brewing Berlin here. Uh, we pre-sold these via, um, a website called Indiegogo, and we pre-sold 1.5 liter bottles at a, a price um, that is the same as the price that somebody would now have to pay for this 750 milliliter bottle. They're expensive, and we thank you to everybody that supported us. And the idea was, look, if you agree to buy some bottles, and we sell enough of, a, of each particular batch we're suggesting, then we will promise to put it into production. It's taken us a little while to bring all of that to fruition. We're now producing one at the average rate of every once every couple, two, three months. Fitting it into the production schedule has been more challenging than we ever anticipated. Um, but the payoff is there. Yeah, definitely. So what do you get? I, th I, th I still get some coconut. I thought maybe they were gone by that time already, but it's still oh. there. Oh, and that hazelnut just kind of yeah, it's, oh. it's, it's a sweetness from the hazelnut. Certainly sweetness from the malt, but a sweetness from the hazelnut that just ties right in. Uh, the mouthfeel is huge. Slight combination. This one came in at 9.1% ABV. Um, this has already proven to be one of the most sought after of the, of yeah. the series. Yeah. yeah. People were... I think it's, I don't know if we have in, in Berlin, I don't think we have any bottle left. And it's just, this is the perfect setting if you're drinking a beer like this. But we're going to drink drinking a lot more, so. Yeah, we have a few more. I think know. we have to get right to it. So, are you going to just finish that all the way? I, I, I'm trying to, I got to remember to pour modest pours. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about it? What, had you ever brewed a beer? No, that's that. I mean, what we did. I mean, when I was thinking about the tons of, of well, tons of, but the, the loads of coconut, and we were hand roasting everything here in in the kitchen of of our bistro, and we were like, 
shoveling and make sure that it's just getting the right roast. It's not not too much, just a yeah. little bit. The toast, the toast, toast on the coconut. Yeah. yeah. So that was um, that's the experience I got from this beer mm. that I remember mostly, and the smell of, of doing that. And um, that was fun. Yeah. And it's I think it's. Uh, if you see it now, and then how, how what people say, the reaction you see after one year, it's out there, and it's, it's so overwhelming positive, it's so nice. Well, um, let's carry right along, shall we? Yeah. Uh, Kara, what is the second one in the series? Because I've lost track myself. Kara is, is here to help us keep us on track. She is, um, are you enjoying any beer yet? No, I'm Just really a... excited about getting into some of these stuff. <laughs> I don't blame you for being excited. Oh yes, that's number two. Oh man, and this is that was fun. This ranks really. Uh, you know, I'm going to say for everyone, this is my favorite for this reason or that reason. Yeah. Uh, but you know, hanging out with Bill and Sam is always so much fun. Um, uh, Bill Kobaleski from Victory Brewing Company, uh, Sam Calagione of Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, and uh, back in 2003. We created an organization we decided to call Buff, Brewers United for Freedom of Flavor. And we wrote a manifesto. It was a, it was designed because um, craft brewers at the time were not getting really any attention in the media and, and just popular acceptance in the United States in 2003. Uh, so anyways, uh, uh, fast forward a few years later, uh, we decided to get together and, and brew a special beer, and we named that Saison du Buff. Um, what did you think of the Saison du Buff, the sort of the regular version, the first time you, you tried it? First of all, it was awesome to meet these two guys. Uh, it was really fun for me to, to brew with them. And um, yeah, and the, the take on this, I mean, we have so many kitchen herbs we place into this beer. and. Um, it's a very excitement. We tried before two two different versions of it on a pilot system, and then we came up with the with this style that we finally packaged and bottled. And uh, it's it's a it's amazing to see how the, these flavors of the kitchen herbs develop in a beer. And that's definitely a complete uh, different take on on beers. What you what you can do, and it, it, it brings. Um, um, an impression to it that you would not expect from a beer, but without like being artificial or other things, it, it still feels natural. And so, yeah, let's have a try how it how it is after. When did you do that? I think it was pretty much a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was September. September, September yeah. of last year, September of 2016. Well, have you ever had the sort of the our regular version? Because what's happened is that we we brewed it together. Uh, at Dogfish Head, we brewed together at Stone, we brewed together at Victory, and now in the U.S. we have it on a rhythm of brewing that version once a year and rotating between each one of our breweries. So you know, once every three years there we go. for each brewery. And um, did, so have you had the regular version? No. You haven't? No. Oh my, well I'll have to get you a bottle, Thomas. It's really nice, it's actually one of my favorite beers. Again, I said that, but I mean it every time. Damn, let's see. Um, but the, the herbs, it's parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. These herbs just, uh, they hold on for, it seems forever. And I think this is gonna just, in years from now, this yeah. is just gonna be so aromatic. Yeah, especially the sage is, is present. Parsley, not so much. Yeah, but we really, as Sam said years ago, we've cornered the uh, parsley beer market. <laughs> Almost a little bit syrupy because it's higher in ABV. It's a lot of, a lot of sweetness, a very strong malt, malt backbone on yeah. this. Um, the sage is, I think, the most apparent, but I'm also getting the rosemary in the back notes. Yes, and it's a, it's it's combined with a certain acidity that comes. You, it's on the on the back of the the, the throat. Wow, this is this is, wasn't intended to have any direct connection to like a Belgian style triple. Yeah, but I'm sensing some of that character that you know that that very honey malt strong ABV because uh, this one here is 
Yeah, but the, the um, honey, honey is, is definitely something that you, you get from it. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have to remind myself. Uh, this one is 10% uh, straight up, 10% ABV. Good, it's just held on beautifully. Uh, I think this is my... my uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm pro sure we will be standing here. Well, that's... So actually, this would be my favorite for you know sitting by a fireplace. But this almost not quite fireplacey, but it's it's very warming and it's higher in ABV, yeah. so it's yeah. got a lot of that character. So even on a cooler night, this would be great. Yeah. And um, of course, we had a phenomenal time with with Bill and Sam, and it's it's great to you know I, I've known those guys. Uh, I started to get to know them well right when we. Uh, first got together for, for Buff in 2003, and then our relationships developed, and I would see them either together, certainly at beer conferences, and individually as we traveled around and would, you know, I would visit into Delaware, or Sam or Bill would come to um, California. And it's just so much fun to celebrate the success of people you respect in the brewing industry, and watch them grow, and you've seen them do well, and it makes me feel really good mm -hmm. to see people continue to embrace their great beers. I can already tell I'm not going to be able to drink all of what I pour on everyone, or I'm not going to make it to the end. I'll be a puddle on the floor. Yeah. Okay, so um, Kira, do you have a? I have go a ahead. Oh, yeah. And, and and we do. Um, Thank you. And you want, you want to share, thing. you want to try, right? I super want to try, yeah, but I don't want to ruin the shot. You're, You're not, not ruining, ruining the look. shot. We, uh, Expressing love for great beer is, is the farthest ring from ruining the shot. I'm going to happily nerd out a little bit. Can, can we have a little bit now? Yeah, you bet. Oh, That's good, good, good. I just want to try it. I don't, I don't need to be crawling out of here. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move on. Uh, Actually, I'm just going to pour less from each one because uh, we're going to share these with the team. Here, thank you very much. Uh, you've got the. This is Kara, by the way. So yeah, it's please. A, she's hey. yeah. She's Kara is uh, Miss Miss Wonderful, thank um, she, amongst many other things. And we she's serving these special beers to us today. Yeah. And now we have number three. That's the one we did with Brewdog. Well, you have to tell the story of Super Yeah, I, I think by the nature of some of these, probably because of their longer relationships with me, yeah. I'm going to tell a lot of the stories. But um, you, you want to do the owners of opening it up while yeah, I... Yeah. So, I first met uh, uh, James uh, when he came and visited Stone in, I think, 2007. And... Um, and they had just started up and we then went in 2009 and brewed a collaboration beer. So it might have been 2008 we met for the first time. He'd probably tell you. Um, but anyways, uh, we, we quickly just learned that these guys were, were approaching beer from a completely non-traditional perspective for Scottish brewers and we loved the way they were going. Ooh. Yeah, it doesn't develop. Only because I want to... Yeah, but the, the flavor doesn't develop if you don't have a sufficient foundation. In it. So that's my beer geek, because I, if I know I'm not going to drink the whole thing, I want to make sure that somebody else has it. It's the conservatism here. But, uh, the idea was to place that one here. Yeah. Okay. But it's so warm. It's so warm. <laughs> okay. We can actually turn down the fire a little bit, but it's a nice visual. Okay. It will, should we keep the visual the same? It looks yes. Really, it looks really Yeah, nice. okay. So it's a nice visual. We'll suffer through it. Um, I'm telling too long of a story, which happens sometimes when you're hanging out drinking beer. So I'm going to try and tighten it up here. We met those guys. We brewed a special beer in Fraserboro. Um, I brought a documentary filmmaker friend of mine. We, we recorded something we called Stone Skips Across the Pond, which you, you can search for and you can watch it online. And uh, interestingly enough, the documentary filmmaker of mine, Jared, uh, and his partner, Chris, uh, they created that, then hooked up with BrewDog, and they created that BrewDog series. So if it wasn't for us taking Jared over with us uh, for that original collaboration in 2009, that series would never have existed. They did a phenomenal job, hilarious guys, sharing you know, beer passion, and we shot an episode with them in San Diego and an episode here. Well, in 2009, we brewed a beer we called Basha. It was intended to stand for and we've never really publicly said, 
So it was intended to stand for uh, black as sin, happy as hell. The truth of the matter is, it didn't end up to be nearly as hoppy as we intended. And we also intended to be a black Belgian double IPA and a Belgian yeast strain didn't really come through as strong as we intended for that. Mm -hmm. But it was still a really nice beer that we were very proud of. So we decided that we would brew this one and call it Super Basha and elevated and see if we can get closer to that original Bel black Belgian, now yeah, maybe triple IPA or something yeah. like that. And the Belgian yeast is strong in this one. Yeah. It's really, really strong. And it's hoppy. It's got a big, you know, it's got a big black IPA hoppiness. Yep. Yeah. And strong bitterness in it. Yeah. But not, not, uh, it's balanced. It's not like harsh and, and getting through. And we have the, you remember that, that. We brewed with Franz Horak, the, the brew, one of the brewmasters right. of, of Bruder came over to brew with us. Yes, because um, Martin was scheduled to come over and brew with us, but then uh, we had a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we let him off the hook. We said, okay, um, yeah, send, send over Franz, uh, who's been with Brewdog for many, many years, yeah, and yeah. a really cool guy. Yeah. And uh, is, is Franz German? Yeah, he's German. Okay, there you go. Franz Horak. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Franz? Post. Yeah, gross tasting of beer. And this one is 10% uh, Orzin, as, as they say in uh, German. Auf Deutsch. 10%, yeah. Yeah, 10%. Ten, ten yeah, it's, it's very nice. It's got a, just, it's got that massiveness to it, but also because it's kind of they got that black IPA character, there's a certain, at 10%, it's still refreshing in a way. Yeah. It's not like like it's it's not big and and weight. It's not, it's not syrupy. Yeah, it's not syrupy. It's not 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 dense or, or how you would expect it at that level. It's a fairly drink. This is great. This has got to be, I think, my, um, my favorite among the others. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well. La um. Yeah, but it's the one I've got right now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's a certain logic to this. Somewhere. Hidden at the bottom of my beer. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I, you know, I haven't tried this. I haven't opened one for many months. Um, I, like a lot of you guys, sometimes, I, well, not sometimes. I can tell you, I honestly have too much archive beer. I just have... To more volume at the rate of, of usage, I don't open them often enough. And I have this strong tendency to just wait for the right moment. Yeah. It's difficult to find. But you have to make them, and that's exactly, I was, uh, that's why when we discussed shooting this video and opening every one, I was like, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> so <laughs> but like an excuse to Yeah, go. but maybe do it in the afternoon. You see, it's already dark outside, so it's. Um it's an evening event. It's nothing you do during the day. <laughs> yeah. That's nothing you do during the day where you have anything to do. Yeah. Um, this is this is really fantastic. Uh, in in the, the the stories with with these guys and the collaboration and they've they've just torn it up. And and they've they what I what I like most about Brewdog is their complete lack of convention. And if you don't like what BrewDog does, BrewDog is just fine with that. That doesn't change them. And, and um, you know, I think in some ways at Stone we have that reputation, but those guys, I, I think, are even more aggressive in, in just going, fuck it, we're going to do it. And uh, you gotta, it, you got to respect that, even if you don't always like what it is that they are doing, which is yeah. fine. So um, shout out to James and Martin and to uh, Franz and the entire BrewDog team. It, this is phenomenal. I really love this beer. Um, I think we hit the notes for the Super Basha. Uh, Black as sin. Yep. Hoppy as hell. Yep. Yep. Nailed it. Okay, Kara, queen of beer delivery. What do you got for us? Glasses first. The first one you get is it. Oh no, I was gonna trade glasses. I'll just take this. I'm happy to okay. talk to your guys. 
Okay. Sorry. Well, don't look at that. Heavy. Yeah. There you go. This one. That's the serious one. The serious <laughs> one. So this one we decided to. Uh, why did we decide to open one of the 1.5 liters? I don't know. Okay. Maybe that has a, something to do with um, somebody missing to pick up this 1.5 liter bottle. No, well, we can say oh, this maybe. is mine because I actually reserved a bunch of them for me. Okay. Then then it's fine. I'll I'll take ownership. So I mean, it's out of my when stock. I, when I saw it, I, I asked our brewer Ralph to pick the bottles to make sure we have the tasting, and he, he came up with the, this selection. So it's all of them small, and this one big one. But I like it somehow because I think this the approach for this beer was the most unusual of all the collaborations because we said something um, we wanted to do something with with sticks and stones, so it was more a stone beer, and. Um, at the same time, when we were discussing the recipe for this beer, a person ca called me from Bavaria, and he's a Steinmetz. I don't know what that is in English. People that uh, know how to make uh, sculptures from stones. Sculpture, okay, so he's a stone carver. Stone carver, okay. Yeah. And they are making kind of barrels of vats out of granite blocks. And that this is used in, in, in winemaking. And he came up with the idea, well, stone, you're, you're named stone, we have a stein. And uh, that makes sense. And I said, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, that was the same time we were discussing this beer. And we said, okay, let's work with a granite stone and some wooden chips. So we do it sticks and stones and bring this all together. And then we wanted to do a traditional German style of beer that was an alt beer. And we said, okay, let's bring this up and use an, use an alt beer yeast for this beer. And, uh, and by bringing this up, there's like crank it up. Crank it up, yeah. yeah. That, that was I, yeah. I should talk more German to you guys and it's more precise. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in this beer, um, is, uh, we of course did the collaboration with Tommy Arthur of Lost Abbey and, and one of the many tie-ins we have with Tommy is the fact that he started his Lost Abbey brewery uh, at the original home of Stone Brewing Company. So we started in 1996, spent our first 10 years there, and then moved over to Escondido where we built our new brewery and we started brewing there at the very end of 2005. In 2006, uh, Tommy started Lost Abbey in our old brewery. And I, I always love, to me this is the, just the great example of the artisanal um, uh, creativity of craft brewing is that he went and did completely different beer styles than what we had been doing over there on its Matta Way in San Marcos. And, uh, and he did such a phenomenal job and I, I love the last Abbey beers. And so Tommy brings just new perspectives and different perspectives and that's what you want in a collaborator. Oh, that's nice, <laughs> doesn't it? I had to pause while you do that. That's great. Oh, for, for you. This is a hefty bottle. So this is the 1.5 liter size, and this is the size that um, only people, and there's actually a chip in that glass. There's a, do you see it? No. Yeah, the, the, there's a, not, not a chip, but there's actually a, a break. It goes way down whoa, here. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So just drink out of the other side and then yeah, um, we'll have yeah, to yeah. officially. But right now it's not coming off. Just switch it into here then maybe. Yeah. So uh, anyways, this size bottle is what people, uh, whether it's a, an individual or a retailer or a wholesaler, anybody can buy these bottles and, and the, the price was the same for everybody. And uh, so some of which were purchased by wholesalers or retailers and, and as we've been releasing them, you've seen them scattered in different parts of the United States um, on store shelves, but for a fairly expensive price. And typically, you know, they'd be going for $79, something like that. Um, but it's very limited and, uh, well, pretty tasty. Here we go. Sure. So this is like a uh, Uber Alt. Yes. It's Uber Alt or um... Uber uh, Alt Uber Alice. Uber, Uber Alice. No, you wouldn't say. That. <laughs> I'm just trying. What's the ABV? 
Well, how does the hair sets change the beer? Yeah. This one is... I remember when we had it freshly, it had a very, I would say, uh, 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 an, an aroma to it, almost, re almost reminding to a slightly going into sour direction. Oh, really? And then now it's, this is completely gone. No, there's no sourness here. There's, there's like berry notes. Oh, there's actually a very tiny little bit of kind of a, a that pungence. Yes, that's yeah. what I mean. But it has leveled out, and it's it's more like going into to raisins, raisin yeah. notes. A lot of toffee. Yeah, definitely toffee, toffee. raisin, caramelization. Um, it's it's very warming. It's not quite as high in ABV as, as some of the others. It's eight point three percent. It's just hugely satisfying. Just the mouth feel and the body. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh yeah. That's great. That's I think that's easy. maybe my favorite. I can think so too. Yeah. So, next up is uh, the Aleman Two Brothers, Champion of the Sun. Go ahead and I'll uh, open it. I'll kind of give the backstory. So years ago, um, I was in Chicago uh, with my friends from Two Brothers, and we. Um, we held a special uh, home brewing competition in Chicago to brew a collaboration beer. And that collaboration beer ended up uh, being uh, with these guys that were calling themselves Ale Man. They were, had the goal of opening a brewery, but at that point they were completely amateur. And they created this beer called um, Day Man. I think I said that. Uh, this is gonna happen a couple of times now since I've had a few beers in me. Um, and, and Day Man was a coffee IPA. Uh, and so we decided to get together again for the, you're doing a great job, Thomas. <laughs> uh, so this is a elevated version of the Dayman. It's called Champion of the Sun. And uh, here's the thing. Now we're going to test it live right here. Uh, is that some of these bottles have not aged especially well. Now, being a double IPA style, What's that? It says, drink fresh. it says drink fresh right on the bottle. That's what Thomas is showing me. So we we're pretty much up front with it. Um, but still, some people were slow in picking up the bottles. Some people probably haven't opened all, every bottle. Hey, this is a bottle that wasn't open. And so we violated our own rule, or our own suggestion anyways. And so some of them have, have um, let's just say they've decided, they've become decidedly not so awesome. And we're gonna see if this one is in the category of Awesome or not quite as awesome? Mm -hmm. Coffee's really nice. Yes, it's still awesome. This one. But here's the thing, I'm not getting a ton of fruity uh, notes, yeah, but the, the it, hoppy it, fruity yes, notes. Yes, but it's uh, this beer when it was, was fresh, we, t we took, when we selected the uh, type of coffee beans for this beer, we took a special roast, a roast that was not um, mildly roasted. If you brew beer, you're always a bit scared of the acidity that the coffee can bring in. But in this way, we trusted our coffee roaster, which is a local one, five elephants here. In, and they have a very mild roast and said, this, this coffee beans are really fruity. They are not a flavor like right. you expect from coffee. So we put a lot of it in and it was from the beginning was a bit more dominant than the hops we had present. So it's actually... This thing is great. This is great and it's still very close to what we have when we 8.6 percent and um, so what we've done is we've actually released a video and information to say look uh, we're gonna take full responsibility even though we told you to drink it fresh even though we told you you know get your bottle pick it up open it if you haven't you can have this the choice the option of turning it back in for two a 1.5 liter for two uh, 750s of any of them, including the Day Man itself, or excuse me, the Champion of the Sun itself. Because we did find that some of the 1.5 liter bottles, for whatever reason, didn't perform quite as well as the 750s. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's kind of us saying, look, you took a huge leap of faith with us back in 2014 to say, yep, I'm going to 
plunk down my hard-earned cash years in advance for this beer that's going to come from a brewery that's not yet even built and it's across the ocean over <laughs> in Germany and yeah there's I mean there's like 10 points of faith that you're taking with us so we wanted to make sure that we just returned that and said look okay well, we, we want to own this so but by chance if you just decided to open it up and enjoy it and you did like we are right now that's cool too yeah I think you it's, it, the beer deserves it that you mm. you try it great okay Kira yeah what's up next ah uh, yes the one with Gen Gentian mm. uh, that's the one that is um, yeah. number one again that's yes and what should be number six. six. Would be number six in the series, but this we did sort of in the arrogant brewing realm, with, which of course Stone Brewing is uh, Dr. Jekyll and arrogant brewing is Mr. Hyde. It's a sort of two sides of the same coin. Um, it's our alternate personality. And that is the um, personality that was brought to bear um, in our collaboration with our friends at Baladin. In Boca Alupo. Yep, in the mouth of the wolf. Yep. And uh, what that means is, do you know what it means? It somehow, actually I don't know what it means, <laughs> but uh, if I drink the beer, I know it. Because it's, it's, it has a bitterness to it. I remember at least yeah. when we had it fresh, it has a bitterness to it that's completely different of bitterness that you normally have uh, in a beer. The Jensina roots um, develop in your entire mouth and they are lasting but not unpleasant a bitterness and maybe that's what they mean i don't know is that no described? no okay. actually it, uh, it's not it but that's what i have what i want to interpret it by tasting boca it. lupo some nice people are waving from outside they're like hey look at all that awesome beer you're having <laughs> Jeez, these are tough corks so a, a corkscrew that's before we break it off Go ahead and put in the corkscrew. Wow. There we go. But they all look precious still. That's oh boy, that just burst of aroma. Oh, it's that's fascinating. It's um. Yeah, you want to share? Yeah. Okay. 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 So. Uh, in Boca Alupo, it means again, uh, mouth of the wolf, and it's it's kind of. Um, oh, I gotta read the translation. Uh, by the way, this is uh, nine point one percent, and um, wow, this is small writing, which I can be guilty of from time to time in the history of stone brewing and arrogant. Uh, okay. Well, you're watching me uh, read, which is not exciting. And the, the truth of the matter is, I don't, I'm, I'm now not remembering exactly what the translation for that was. Something about, you know, power, it, it's like, can, can you look up, um, Kara, in Boca, B-O-C-C-A-A-L, and then Lupo, L-U-P-O. It's a phrase, and we're gonna be reminded. Do you wanna read it? Or you can tell, tell me, yeah. Uh, in Boca a Lupo is an Italian idiom used in opera and theater to wish a performer good luck prior to a performance. Oh yeah, good luck. They're very simple. Good yeah. luck. Means good luck. So, it's a little bit of a leap to think in the mouth of the wolf is good yeah. luck. But on the other hand, you know, I've heard the, the German, instead of crossing your fingers, you hold your thumbs. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually kind of makes sense, I guess. Okay. It's in, in anticipation. Yeah. Okay. Not that it has anything to do with in Boca al Lupo, but it means good luck, so good luck. So the gentian root, which comes from the Italian Alps, brings an earthy bitterness to it. Yeah, and it's all over. It's not just... Right. Kind of... Okay, kind of like limited to the back of the tongue. It's all your throat. It's all over. Ah. Oh, that's good, and it's so unique. Yeah. And that's arrogant bastard all the way. And uh, the guys at um, Baladin, 
they uh, they started brewing just a little bit before us, but, but really got in in full swing in the late 90s and the early 2000s along, and they have become Italy's leading craft brewer. They're just sort of the spiritual leader of the craft brewing movement. Um, and uh, they have a farmhouse uh, brewery that they uh, have built recently. Well, actually, that they, they took an old farmhouse building and they built all this stuff around it. They have uh, uh, cheese making, chocolate making, um, charcuterie, um, bread making, all of this they're building into this historical uh, farmhouse building. It's phenomenal. If you get anywhere near the, the Piemonte region, which is uh, Piedmont, uh, in northern Italy, um, out and around, say, Turin, Italy, and, and outside of there. Very small town called uh, Piozzo, and uh, it's in the Piazza of Piozzo, the, so the little town square of Piozzo that uh, the Baladin first started with a little tiny brew pub. Um, and they brewed phenomenal beers, and I, this, is, this is definitely, I think, my favorite. Yeah. Mm. Because I wonder if, if I, I, I've never had a beer like this and I, ever. And, and if you think of like the row now, this is now the sixth beer that we're drinking, yeah, or tasting, and how different they all are. This is radically different. Uh, I'm almost going to say semi radically different from anything I've had before. Actually, I think that's the way to describe it. You take, it's almost as if we'd taken something completely familiar in the arrogant bastard realm and completely unfamiliar and then brought them together and this is the result. Yeah. And that gentian root, boy, that such a satisfying earthy, it's like a... a it's all over, but it's not unpleasant. It's a, no, a it's very, great. very um, um, relaxing. Yeah, the, 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 the bitterness is so unique in the way that it just is almost coating. But it's kind of, you ever had uh, kava kava? No, what is kava kava? Kava kava is a root from, I think, Southeast Asia. And it's a drink that will make the, your mouth a little bit numb. Okay. And uh, it's a uh, relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is not nearly so strong as that. Kava kava has a really interesting, strong taste. Um, this is mildly represented or reminiscent of uh, kava kava, so I'm getting a little bit of that. It's not a. Does your mouth feel numb at all? No. no but all. but can you understand why I would use that reference? Does that make sense yeah. with what you're experiencing? A little bit of this because you're getting the roof of your mouth. I mean, because I'm tasting right, not tasting, but I have a sensation in the roof, roof of my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Make, that makes sense. Okay. Even though I might feel a little bit numb because we're tasting well. it. <laughs> so maybe you can't tell where the num numbness is coming from. Yeah. <laughs> you just know it's there. Okay. That's fantastic. We are... Uh, ah, yes. What is it? This is our thing with uh, super Will magic, and Drew. Super magic woods. Super, super, super magic. Magic woods down. What do you say? Super. Super. Zupa. Zupa? Zupa. 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 Yeah? Okay. You want to switch to Yeah. Fresh glass is good. I'm good with my glass. I emptied it. So that's the first beer we literally barrel aged here in Berlin. Oh, this one. This yes. one? Yeah. yeah. So... I know, it's, it's kind of phenomenal, so... It's a kind of a big, big step. We're starting a brewery and then all of a sudden we have wooden barrels in and we're filling them and we try it out and that's the fir very first outcome. So, um, I've had the, the fond fortune of being able to know Will now. I've, we first corresponded by email a little bit um, since 2002. When he just sent a random email and he said, by the way, I'm a big fan of your beer. And I think what you're doing is cool and thought I'd say hello. And a few <laughs> years later, awesome, love that sound. A few years later, he came down and did a book reading at our place at the Stone Brewing World Be Strong Gardens in, in Escondido. And I was a little embarrassed because I think like 12 people showed up. Today, it would be like a line. Um, but it was earlier in his writing career, 
and before he became so known for it, fast forward, he started getting into home brewing. And uh, in one random conversation, because uh, he would come down from, from LA from time to time just to um, have dinner at Stone Brewing. And uh, every once in a while, if our schedules would match up, I'd join him and his wife, Ann, and maybe the kids. And uh, just really enjoyed it. So he proposed the idea of, hey, maybe we should make a collaboration beer. And I'm like, well, we don't make a collaboration beer with just anybody. No, Will's not just anybody, of course, but we don't do it with just anybody unless they have a tie-in to actual brewing. You know, if we do a collaboration, we got to, it's collaborative. It's actually, you got to, he is like, no, I've been home brewing and I'm, yeah. Anyways, that conversation didn't last very long before. I was like, yeah, that sounds phenomenal. Um, so we decided to bring in a friend of ours. Turned out we knew this guy independently, but we both know him. His name's Drew Curtis. He's from Kentucky, and he had some awesome ideas of bourbon barrel aging and uh, pecans, because he, he, he had an idea to make a beer that was a little bit inspired by a derby pie. And Will, um, of course, wanted some wheat in there. And you know, we, anyways, all three of us, we just created this recipe. Now, that's become the Wood Stout, or the Stone Forking Wheat and Wood Stout. This is the Zippo. Magic, Magic Wood Stout, stuff. yeah, and we wanted to kind of crank it up, and that's where I said to Thomas, let him talk a little bit about what we did that brewing day with uh, with with Drew. Yeah, we we kind of thought, okay, let's let's look on on what impact could the Germans play on that, and we said, okay, pecan nuts is, is something, but maybe we go uh, marzipan, look on on almonds, look on on hazelnuts, and then we said, okay, what we do about the barrel aging. And uh, we found a way to source some uh, from 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 Bavaria, uh, some some wooden barrels where German whiskey was was aged in. And these barrels we took to to maturate that beer or let us see a uh, uh, big part of this beer in. And um, yeah, and then we blended everything together at the end, and uh, this is the outcome. Mm -hmm. I, I, let's let's try it. So it's brewed with hazelnuts, pecans, almonds, and uh, partially aged in uh, in whiskey barrels, German whiskey barrels specifically. Ten point one percent, so it's the strongest of uh, all of them so far. And this one, it's when the the alcohol is noticeable. It's noticeable, but it it, it gives more a sweetness. It's not burning. It's not oh, this, yeah. this, this sharpness that alcohol can provide. Um, I get what, what some of the, the hazelnut, but in a completely different way than to the Maui. The Maui is, I mean, there's a couple of commonality points in, yeah. in the ingredients, but the final result is, is completely different. This is, um, it's just got a not as, um, not as heavy a body as the Maui. This is, a, I don't want to call this body thin, but it's not a syrupy body. Yeah. And it has also the the, the mm. carbonation, like like tickling on your tongue a bit. It does. Playing, playing. That's interesting how carbonation can have such different personalities because we described which one was it? The, the is it more of a prickly, the pin prick carbonation. Was it also the the Maui? Uh, what? Uh, okay, okay. Kara's yeah. nodding her head. Yeah. Thank you very much. She's taking notes back there. <laughs> um, it was the Maui. Yeah, that had more of a, a pin prickly. Um, yeah, he is a little bit. Uh, no, this lighter. is like. Um, it's almost like dancing on your tongue in a way. I don't want to get too flowery with the language here, but it, there is some kind of that. It's it's definitely got a different character to the carbonation. Can you smell it? Do you want some? You want to try a taste? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to hold it? Do you want to hold the camera? No, or you can come yeah, on yeah, camera, come, or you come, can come, come sure on. come on camera. That's okay. Morris should should <laughs> here. Give me the rig. <laughs> Crying out loud. Let me hold on to this thing. There you go. We've been holding this thing. So, <coughs> so it's Morris. Hey. Hey. And that's go. Kira. Hey. And that's the the wood stuff. Can I get a little bit of the? Uh, yeah. The the or, one? The well, I want both, but I I definitely want this one. I'm gonna go into that one. That's the baladin, right? Yeah. Ooh. I'm being a little bit of a dork and doing them in the, in the order. 
Cheers. You're my kind of dork. Uh, Thank there. you. Yeah, 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 there you go. I really didn't know the color was going to be this. It's really, really beautiful. That one's, I mean, it's pretty dark. Yeah. Getting really close, Greg. Getting really close. <laughs> Get it in my nose. No, it's this not is that great close. Though. What do you think? I mean, I. It's a perfect taste if you sit down by the fireplace. Do you think? Oh, really? Are we yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta sit reversal. down there. Perfect. And then you get this perfect. Good. Thank this is what you. it feels like, huh? Cheers. Cheers. It's it's no longer about you, Thomas. It's yeah, about these guys now. Yeah. Okay. This one's really good. I mean, they're no. Which one, which one do you have? This one's the Balladum. Okay. So this is kind of a fun job you guys have. This is nice. Yeah. That's the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> Eric and Bastard was the, like, the first beer that really got me into stone. That's not true. Sublimely Self-Righteous was, and then Eric and Bastard. Uh. So it's nice, it's nice that this, um, I mean, it's nice to see it evolve. It's pretty cool. It's got it's very unique, but it's got a very specific flavor. This, this perfect. One's, this one's also awesome. Which one? The red one. So uh, why don't you take a moment and introduce yourselves, Kira? I'm Kira. Um, I've been with Stone for a little bit over two years now. Part of the Berlin crew. I do a lot of the marketing and kind of creative projects around here. Close, close with Moritz. Close with Greg and Thomas too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm Moritz. I'm, I've been with Stone for about, I think, five weeks. Yeah. Strong five yeah. weeks. Yeah, strong five weeks. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm the content manager and graphic designer and cameraman. He's kicking out right. so many cool movies. Camera guy, got great equipment. This is a very cool rig that I'm holding here. <laughs> and uh, we got another one right there. We got this. There's the camera. Oh, yeah. And we're in the library bar at the Stone Brewing World Eastern Gardens, which is out there on the other side of that window. And uh, I, I knew yeah. this, this, I, I knew this, this, this filming would, <laughs> would have a turn <laughs> someplace. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, and, we're and in the final stretch now. Yeah, yeah. And this one hasn't even been released. Uh, that's right. Um, it's, it's going to be released this week, right? This one on the 21st. Oh, you say, I mean, yes, yes. This, the, this, so the, this, this the uh, Zipper Project Woodstown is, uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, we packaged. Yeah, it's on, it's, I think it's on the boat right now. No, it's uh, probably already at the, at the customs. Uh, so it's, No, it's in our logistics centers and it's now being released. It's okay, so it's still US. in Germany. No, or no, it's in the US. Yes, so it's okay. going to be released to, to everybody who signed up next week, this week. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so we, we concluded that uh, the Super Magic Bootstout is just about to be released. And then we have one uh, that we did with Todd, uh, Todd Hogg. Um, interesting story. Uh, so, so Todd, I've now known for a few years. He was brewing for Surly Brewing. And during the time that we initially proposed the Stone Berlin groundbreaking collaborations, um, and Todd said, yeah, he'd love to join us. Uh, he was with Surly, Bra uh, Surly Brewing. And in the meantime, um, it, you know, his situation changed. And he ended up moving over into Chicago. And now he's working with uh, those cool cats over at Three Floyds. And this is sort of, it's not um, sort of under Surly. It's not under Three Floyds. It's, 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 Todd. it's Todd. Yeah, it's exactly. Todd. Yeah. And, um, Todd uh, is a guitar player. He plays with a, a band called, uh, it's the tip of my tongue, damn it, I know it, uh, Power Mad. And Power Mad, um, I've had the pleasure of seeing play in Minneapolis, in their hometown, um, is just heavy. And if anybody's, um, actually, this may sound strange, but if you've used the uh, men's room at the Stone Brewing World Be Stone Gardens, you'll know that heavy, because um, 
because I actually uh, require that uh, death metal be played in all of our restrooms. It's just a thing. If you're going into the men's room, what do you want? I, Silence? It's, it's so much fun. It's awesome. It's you want, you want silence? You want to like hang out and talk to the person next to you? No. You, you want death metal. So that's what we have. And it's, uh, it's not that, that that's the only place. This is the same broken glass. Yeah, I, know, I know, I know, I yeah. know. It's not that that's the only place. It's not the only place, but it's just awesome to have great music playing. I thought I put it far away enough from there. Okay, okay. Uh, just keep it in that glass and give it that glass to Kira. But, well, yeah. whatever. Okay. No, it's okay. Yeah, it's that's fine. Easier. So um, I'm going tangential here. Yeah. Part of the territory. But that, Todd that, is an awesome guitar player, like freaking awesome guitar player. And as a former wannabe guitar player, I know how to recognize him. Not in me, but yes in him. And uh, yeah, so he's known as an axe man, which means guitar player. So this became uh, Zauer, Zauer Axtman. Zauer Axtman. Yeah, that's the story behind that. We were discussing what we do. And so mm. that, this beer is the most different of all of them. I just get that wrong. Because that's an, a sore beer. I'm gonna huff this. This, this one is, is, is not, it doesn't have dark malts in it. It doesn't have Belgian yeast in it, but it is um, strong, it's acidic. And when I said, okay, why is everybody who pulled out a recipe and said, like, let's do something. I don't know what he said. <laughs> what he wrote, and I was like, "What the hell? We're in Berlin. Why nobody wants to brew Berliner Weisse with me? Something's at that style." And he said, yeah, "Okay, let's go for that." And then we were kind of discussing the recipe, and he said, "Okay, let's. let's what about playing with some, some ginger and and, and lime oh. to it?" Wow! And I mean, wow! I have not tasted this before. Wow, this is awesome. This is just like a spike. It's, you think so, ginger. What's the other uh, main lime attributes? Leaves. Lime leaf. Okay. Ginger and lime leaf. And a sour, strong sour. So, what's the ABV mm -hmm. on it? It's about nine, I think. Okay, I gotta put my glasses on again. Yeah, what do you say? The label says nine. I think that's. Is that what be, it says? Has to be close to. Uh, it says 9.8. 9.8. So, almost 10%. No, I think it's nine. Oh, it's, 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 it's just a oh, with, the, with, the, with the, the slash through. In the, okay. in the text it says, okay. it's very small. So, 9%, but it's just a power punch of flavor just coming right through. Mm. This is especially exciting because I this is the one that I had never tasted. We just packaged one. last week, so it's on. It's going to be packaged on the container tomorrow. And then it's going to be shipped to the US, so I think the release date will be like at six weeks from now. Wow. So, yeah. Um, Todd, please, please watch out. Todd, brothers, you, you guys nailed it. And then that's, this is that's really, 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 really I, have, I haven't translated what that means, Saura Axtmann. So that means an eggs man coming with an eggs. And it's like, if you translate that, that's... Um, if, if somebody has an, an acidic mood, he's mad or he's angry. That's what we say in German. So saura means acidic or mad or angry and eggsman. So an angry eggsman, uh, that is somehow what, what we... So it's kind of a double meaning. It's double got meaning. a brewing meaning. It's got uh, uh, a meaning direct to Todd. So yeah. it's a double meaning for both the word saur yeah. and the word eggsman. Yeah. And, um, well, the beer tasting, it doesn't make you angry, you see, but... No. And Todd's actually a pretty good-natured guy. Yes. <laughs> but, um, damn it, this is good. Yeah. I'm like, really, I'm like, um, you know, jump out of my chair. Okay, I don't have to physically do it, but I'm jump out of my chair excited about this. It's fun. This is high five on this. Yeah? Yeah. Of course, the last one is a favorite. <laughs> well, this is this is my favorite because I think this one this one's the best so far. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, if I think of, I mean, look look at this. You have the the coconut. Oh the yeah. Specialty here. Oh, that's that's my favorite. That's what we did. And then then we have 
the Saison de Boeuf, the Royal Bill. Imperial Saison de Boeuf. With Sam and Bill, and, and of course my old friend Garrett and, and, the, and the Herbals. And here yeah. we have the Super Basha with this, yeah. with the Belgian yeast coming through and, and, guys. And, and, and pumping this all up. Yeah. Hitting the notes that we tried but missed in 2009 and now finally hit them in 2016. Yeah. And then the Sticks and Stones approach with the Garrett ba Granite Barrel. Yeah. Granite with Tommy Arthur, uh, Lost Abbey fame, and brewing now at our original home on Mattaway in uh, 155 Mattaway, San Marcos. And the champion of the sun. Yeah. And some of these are ones. not so great right now, but that bottle was freaking awesome. So, yeah. I think that was my favorite. And then we have. No, this one was. In Boca Lupulo. Yeah. Which means good luck, by the way. And uh, this one, did we drink all of it? It's empty. Well, maybe these guys were. These guys. These guys were <laughs> after it. That's, that's really good. I like the way that the bitterness is just so different from any other. Yeah. Oops. Um, and, and then we any other. Wait, I have, I have finished my sentence. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> it became really important to me for a moment. But the bitterness, I just, I, I'm reflecting back to the, in El Boco, in El Boco El Lupo, uh, how the bitterness is so unique and different than anything I've ever had. Yeah, and then we have the Super Magic Boots. The Super Magic Boots out. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's standing out anyways. Yeah. Now, this one doesn't have a label with, uh, you know, us as uh, Norse gods uh, or us as um, having, uh, you know, uh, alien style, one of our heads coming out of the other's mouth. Because what we do every time is a, is a famous comic book artist has been um, different ones year after year, each new edition of the sort of regular Wood Stout, um, as if there is such a thing as a regular Wood Stout, has uh, done some really amazing label art. Um, this one fits in the convention of the groundbreaking collaborations, but what's inside doesn't fit in the convention at all. Yeah, that's just, just and solid. Then, and then this one is just, the, this is the new kid on the block. And uh, we got an axe here, and another axe here, and uh, wow, this is good. Yeah. I think this one's my favorite. May I? So Kara, come on over. Yeah, yeah, come yeah, on yeah, yeah. Over. Here, here you go. Absolutely. I'm a Chicago gal, so this one's really awesome. What? More, yeah. more, it's a more, I'm, here, you go first, you go okay, first, please. Thanks. Yeah, this is, you know, it, it, the reason why I'm reacting so big to this is because I've had the others before and I've known how awesome they were and did have this for the first time and go, damn, that's awesome too, but in a completely different way. Yeah. And I get excited about it. Call me a geek. No, go ahead, call me a geek. Just say geek. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hi, that's me. <laughs> so, um, I think that, that wraps up this uh, little tasting session. I don't know whose idea this was, but it was a really good one. Which one? The, the, <laughs> this. The, the, this? Yeah. yeah. It's a, a, if at the end, I mean, it's always... Um, it's a bit challenging for us to do these, ah. but it really, it's a, it's a good challenge. It's a positive one. But you've had a hard time. So here's, here's the challenge that we gave to Thomas and his entire team. By the way, before we hired you, before we hired you, before we built a brewery, we have already decided there's a bunch of beers that we're going to make with all these world famous brewers in the craft brewing scene. And, um, you're going to have to bend in ways that you're not used to bending from a brewing perspective. You're going to have to do things. And oh, by the way, we need you making beers, Stone IPA, Stone Ruination IPA, uh, now Stone Ripper IPA, this is a new uh, White Guys Berliner Weisse that we have, um, Eric and Bastard Ale that we brew here. You're going to have to brew all of those. Make them awesome. Make them fresh all the time so we can distribute and actually have a real business model here. In addition to that, you've got to figure out how to put in all of this stuff and just make it work throughout the system. Yeah. 
under a brewing system that we couldn't have possibly designed, you, you don't design a brewing system to make this beer right. yeah. and this beer on the same one, right? Well, these ones are fairly easy. These ones, okay. And this one, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Yo, which one? Actually, which were the more difficult ones? I, I think it's a, the 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 Maui one with all the coconut addition. Okay, that was so much of, of ingredients that we didn't know how to place into the brew kettle. Right, and then this one with the granite stone that was outstanding for himself because I've never worked with a stone as a beer bat. Yeah, and. Um, Right now, by the way, we're trying at the moment maturating Aragorn Bastard in this, this vessel. I don't know about how it comes out, in, but... In, what you told me actually is that, because, well, I've seen it, the walls are about this thick? Yeah, something like this. And, okay. and, and the, the, the beer, it's already brown outside. So Maybe the, it's coming partly from, from this beer, but now it's also the Aragorn Bastard. The malt sitting. sugars are, are seeping yes. through. Yeah. The, solid granite vat which is uh, about yay big around more yeah, or less yeah. yeah and this tall yeah yeah it's like a, it's a uh, in barrels it's like seven barrels we have inside and uh, we require um either a forklift or about um 10 Schwarke 10 schwarzeneggers in their prime yeah that's it that's what it is yeah more or less or a uh, hundred of me. <laughs> <laughs> of me. <laughs> mm. Wow, this is good. Wow, this is good. I'm loving this. I wonder, Thank you. wonder how that will behave when it ages. This is gonna get... Um, so the only the only one of these uh, is Champion of the Sun is and 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 for many people and for the ones that I've tried I have I actually I actually did try one that was like okay I get it this is not the way it should be yeah so but, I, I, but I, most I, of them I've tried as like this is beautiful yeah all the ones I tried I've never had the ones that, that you were referring well, to may, so I'm may, not sure. may that always be the case yeah right um, but uh, all of the rest I have. No question, what's it for years? All of these should hang out there. The the herbalness of the saison de buff is not going to go away, and we have the sort of regular editions of the saison de buff, which we've been brewing for years, which have held just beautifully over the years. I love going to my own personal cellar and popping a 12 ounce saison de buff, either from one we brewed at Stone or one at Victory or one from Dogfish Head. Um, the uh, in Boca Alupo with that unique gentian character, that's gonna stay sharp and crisp and just kinda mm, with you, I yeah. think. And, and that's probably gonna have a strong preservative character, oh, sort of a natural same. kind of yeah. flavor profile preservative. Yeah. Um, the caramelic notes here and the sticks and stuff. Yeah, and that's just gonna get, that's gonna kinda, kinda sink down and just get mellower and mellower yeah. and mellower and mellower, like this toffee, cognac-y kinda character, yeah. I imagine. Yeah. It will go that direction. And the Sauber Axman, I mean, it's a, a Sauber. Sauber usually last forever, but we don't know. I mean, forever's big, but I've, I've had uh, my oldest sour beer. Now, I had this a while ago. I had it in 2004. I had a 1978 sour beer yeah. uh, from the Culminator in Antwerp. Uh, the Culminator yeah. is a very famous beer bar that was famous for having super aged beers going way back. And um, so if you haven't been to the Culminator, go check it out. It's crazy little authentic, been there forever, uh, uh, Belgian beer bar in Antwerp. Which by the way, Antwerp means hand throwing. That's, that's, did you know that? And the symbol of Antwerp, I'm gonna go on a little thing just cause it's so weirdly awesome. Did you know this? No. Nope. Antwerp. So this story is that a giant um, they have all these canals because they have all these water passageways or bridges and whatnot. And this giant was um, exacting a unreasonable toll uh, from all the people that wanted to go over this bridge. And if, if somebody refused to pay the toll, he would chop off their hand. And uh, a Roman soldier came through and vanquished the giant, chopped off the giant's hand and threw the giant's hand into the canal or the waterway. And 
literally you see um, a hand throwing, it's like, like this, a, a severed hand yeah. being thrown. And that's part of the, the symbol or the shield of the city of Antwerp. Antwerp means hand throwing. Hand throwing. That's how the city was named. Yeah, makes sense. There's that so much tie-in of the language. Yeah, but I never thought about that. <laughs> so why would you? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, to back now to go in reverse to hand throwing to the culminators in Antwerp, Antwerp culminators, sour beer and Belgian beer archival um, uh, pub and I had uh, the oldest sour beer in my life at that time which was a 1978 beer and it was in 2004 yep. so help me out there 88 uh, 98 so 26 years old was the bottle of beer yep. and it was beautiful yep. complex earthy sour sharp refreshing all of these you know crazy things combined Yep. And I, I uh, not that I'm going to wait till 2000 for 26 years, because um, that would be uh, 22, 32, 42. That would be 2042 that I would have to wait to match the same age for this particular beer. I'm not going to, no, 2043, sorry, we're in 2017 now. Yeah. So 2043, I'm not waiting that long. I'm just not, I'm not going to. Yeah, but you can well, maybe save, one. save one bottle. I don't know. Um, I just, on the other hand, have you ever aged a beer that you knew was an awesome beer and you simply kept on to it, you held on to it too long nope. until it was no longer nope. awesome? Nope. So you are a better man than me, Thomas Tyrell, because I have taken many awesome beers and I've cellared them until they were no longer awesome. And then I looked at myself and I'm like, why did I take this awesome beer and yeah. wait so long? So now it's no longer awesome. So the message, and I say this to everybody because I'm trying to learn so from I, it myself. I, I drink most champion of the Yeah, yeah, good, good. Drink the damn thing. This is a message to you, Greg. Back to me, I'm telling you, I'm, I, I like to say it out loud so I can maybe get into my own thick skull. Drink the damn beer. Enjoy it. Like we're doing right now. Yeah. So what, which one do you choose next? Uh, I'm going to go back to the Champion of the Sun. Let's pick all the bottles and go to the bar and share with people. Well, this is a crazy idea. Yeah. I just might be in. Yeah. 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 Sure. Let's get a refill first. No yes. I think we, <laughs> uh, you know what we should really do though, is we should actually, a small modification, take them to the bar, um, have them put them in the fridge for this team. Yes. As they get off their shifts yes. and, and share it with uh, the team stone here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it that way. Yeah. Maybe we can plug in the, the how do you say, the corks again? Oh, I just, I uh, if we get them into the fridge, so, yeah, you couldn't get those back in. We can barely get them out. Yeah. <laughs> God, this is good. All right. So, um, a couple things to wrap up. Once again, my biggest thanks and appreciation for everybody who has supported us over the years supported us with this campaign whether or not you uh you originally decided to participate in the indiegogo campaign in 2014 or more recently you've just decided hey that looks cool i'm going to pick one of those up when i see them uh that's fantastic and it's appreciated welcome uh, i hope you get a chance to visit here uh, stone brewing berlin at some point we're working uh, feverishly on opening up our restaurant in Richmond, and we hope to be open at uh, the Stone Brewing World Bistro and Gardens there in late 2018. Uh, I'll be in Napa in a week, and um, uh, we're, we're going to open late 2017, early 2018. That's going to be a really interesting, cool 1877 standalone stone, or, uh, historic stone building. We get to do so many fun things and we could not do any of it, any of it, if it wasn't for you guys being so awesome. It feels like a privilege to be able to, <laughs> well, drink beer. Yeah, it is. I, I, I can say so as well. Yeah. <laughs> and and you, you made it. And Thomas made this happen. It's, 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 uh, it's, team. It's, it's, but it's so much fun at the end um, and drinking the beers and, and, and enjoying what, what we did. Yeah, and, and together for you. 
So long-winded, I tend to be long-winded sometimes, but it's only my enthusiasm and just inner geek talking that says, thank you so much. It's a privilege. And with my uh, last sip of the Zawa Axman, uh, cheers to all of you. And I hope to see you soon. Close it. Close it. Wow. That's good. That's good. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have to go bulls. Yeah, this Champion of the Sun's really good. Yes. It's just, it's just, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a bummer, but you know, it's not the most shocking thing ever that, uh, you know, a double IPA is going to have, uh, you know, be on the other side of its, you know, yeah, curve. Yeah, yeah, I get that completely. But six months, is it more than six months? So about six months later? Yeah, we package in March. March, so it's, it's, September. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. six months now. And um, yeah, I, I was, but I, I, when they, they said that, I was tasting like from everywhere bottles. And none of the bottles I could get here in Berlin that would. Like oh, when we food. first said, "Hey, it's Thomas, yeah, we're Thomas, tasting some that don't taste so perfect." perfect. Yeah. yeah. For me, they're all fine. What do you want? Uh, what can I pour you a little bit more of? Uh, this one. Okay. I, mean, I want the I want the privilege of doing it for crying out loud. You. Oh, oh it's gonna take two hands. <laughs> Yeah, the, um, the toffee on this thing is insane. I mean, just like this big caramel malty thing. And I think that's, a, that's the one that's the lowest in, in ABV, right? Mm -hmm. Of all of them. It was eight, I still need my glasses every yeah. time. Eight point something? Eight point one, was it? Eight point three. Yeah. From the mouthfulness, I think it's the biggest one. In, in a way, I think this has the strongest tie into German, st uh, German style. I mean, it's the closest you might think, because it's got a little Doppelbachish. The, this kind one, a, yeah, 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 the yeah. yeah, yeah. I was thinking of when I had different. A, but um, I was at one place called um, where, where they all have the sausages here in Berlin, um, in Hausdorff Kalplatz. Uh, uh, Meisterstück. Meisterstück. Yeah, okay. yeah. I was there and I was trying a barley wine of a Belgian brewery and I was just reminded on this beer, mm. and uh, it's, it goes into that direction of a barley wine. But it's getting this. this yeah, yeah it's, uh, I think this maybe is the missing link, if if there was such uh, a missing link between barley wine and uh, Doppelbach. Yeah, could be. Ish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <sighs> I hear they have good food here. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. You want to get some meat? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. But bring the bottle. Oh know. yeah, that's a warm up. Let's see how much you can pick with one. No, that's not. You're making, you're making so I can, I can, I can do it, but it's not smart. Not, not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's the point. I'm already feeling like. Okay, I'm gonna come set it.